morning and welcome to worship at the Meeting House in Alexandria, Virginia on this glorious Lord's Day as we celebrate Ascension of the Lord Sunday. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your own journey of faith, know that you are welcome here. Today, we are also delighted to welcome our friend and fellow Alexandria pastor, the Reverend Julie Wilson Black, to our pulpit. This is one of the joys of being part of a connectional church and also filming online. Julie will be sharing her message with us as Rocky rests up after having had a successful heart stent procedure earlier in the week. And I know that he and Anne join me in welcoming Julie. The Lord be with you. Let us worship God. We have heard that we are not enough, not good enough, not strong enough, not whole enough. But, but God, God tells, tells us, us otherwise. otherwise. We have heard that we do not make enough, do not own enough, do not have enough. But, but God, God tells, tells us we have more, more than, than enough in Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. We gather to worship. For God's word is enough, hope enough, love enough, life enough. God, God blesses, blesses us with eternal, eternal life, and, and this life is in God's Son. Let us worship God. Let us worship God. As we sing our alleluias and praise, we are mindful of where we have fallen short this week, where we have missed the mark and sinned against God and one another. But knowing that God's love and mercy are from everlasting to everlasting, we dare to approach God in confidence, offering up our prayer of confession. Will you join me? O oh Christ, who prayed for us, who died for us and lives for us. You taught us that we belong to you and your word is our truth. Forgive us, O oh Lord, when we live as if we belonged only to ourselves. Forgive us when we foolishly think that power is the ultimate truth. Speak your words of peace to us this day and make our lives a testimony to your grace. For you are the source of life itself, and only in you can we truly live. Hear now the prayers we bring to you in silence.
Friends, hear, believe, and proclaim the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, loved, and set free to be at peace. In the name of the Creator, and the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Is God the Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Listen for God's word to us. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught, from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, People of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hi everyone, we're so glad you joined us for the time with children. We're the Blair family. I'm Alex. I'm Callum. And I'm Ellen. What comes to your mind when you think of something that is powerful? A jet engine is powerful. A lift carries planes through the sky. The wind is powerful. 
It turns windmills and sometimes causes large waves to form in the ocean. A horse is powerful. It can run for long distances and some horses pull heavy loads. Electricity is powerful. It lights our houses and cities. The engine of a train is powerful. It can pull a long line of railroad cars. Many of the powerful things that we just shared are also noisy. However, in our Bible story today, we hear about a quiet kind of power. Jesus met with his disciples as he prepared to go to heaven to be with God. And he told them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Jesus wanted his disciples to know that after he left, God would send the Holy Spirit to be with him. The Holy Spirit is God's spirit that lives within us when we accept God's love. The Holy Spirit comforts us when we are feeling sad. It teaches us right from wrong, and it helps us to know God's love. The Holy Spirit gives us confidence. It is the quiet power that lives within each one of us. Before going to heaven, Jesus called each, each of his disciples to go forth and share that quiet power and God's love with others. They were not left behind. They were sent out. And so it, was, and so it is with us. Jesus calls each and every one of us to go out and share God's love. Let us pray. Dear God, help, help us share, share the power of your love with others by our words and actions each and every day. May God be with you there. May God be with us here. May God be with everyone everywhere. Amen. Our second reading is from the letter to the Ephesians which speaks to the power that the risen Christ confers on his followers in the passage we just heard. Listen for the word of God. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God in creation, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Ever-present God, without your word, we have nothing to say. Without your spirit, we are helpless. Give us your Holy Spirit that we may hear the good news you have for us today. Amen. Today, the season of Easter draws to a close as we celebrate the ascension of Christ and look forward to the coming of the Holy Spirit next Sunday on Pentecost. The Easter season framed by the lectionary is one long farewell to the earthly Jesus. The passages for this season begin with resurrection appearances and continue in the Gospel of John with Jesus preparing the disciples to love one another, even when he is no longer with them. Today, the final goodbye comes. The book of Acts depicts this transition from one dimension to another in spatial terms, with Jesus literally ascending into heaven. 
In the Gospel of John, by contrast, Jesus doesn't physically ascend, but makes it clear that he is no longer available to his disciples in the same way. He says to Mary Magdalene in the garden, do not hold on to me, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Whether this ascension happens physically or spiritually, it is clear that the relationship is changing. There is a transfer of power happening as the authority and responsibility to continue Jesus' work on earth is given over to the disciples. As he says in this morning's reading from Acts, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The reading from Ephesians picks up on this theme, speaking of the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. So friends, we've got the power. Hooray for us. But what exactly is this power that God has transferred to us through Christ, through the Holy Spirit? We know what power usually looks like in our world. It's the power of force, of amassing enough money and weapons to get what you want. It's the same kind of power the disciples had in mind when they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? For centuries, the people of Israel had dreamed of a forceful overthrow of Roman rule, of having the power to restore their kingdom, a nation in which God, not Caesar, would reign. It was the dream that the disciples still hoped against hope would come true. But Jesus did not grant their wish. Through his death and resurrection, he invited them to enter a different kind of kingdom. This one would not be geographically limited to Israel, but would extend to the ends of the earth And in reframing for them what the kingdom of God looks like, he also redefined what power looks like. No longer would power require a king enthroned in Jerusalem, but the kingdom of God would be led by the least and the last, transforming their communities like yeast transforms dough. No longer would power be symbolized by the mighty cedars of Lebanon, but by the tiniest of mustard seeds. No longer would power be located in the land of Israel because Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. No longer would they expect to find a savior in political leaders because Jesus said, the kingdom of God is among you not only in the halls of power. The power we have from Jesus is a peaceful one, and yet it has managed in those two centuries since to change the world. We have fresh evidence of that everywhere we look today, where we find people using this kind of peaceful power to affect change from the bottom up. We see people power fueling cultural and legislative change through movements like Me Too and Black Lives Matter. We see the collective power of employees who are holding their companies to account. We see the power of the ballot box among energized and organized voters. We see the power of people who are willing to sacrifice their time, treasure, and comfort to stand up for what is right. This kind of power is transforming institutions too. 
It seems like every college or university south of the Mason-Dixon line is in the middle of some kind of reckoning with their racist past. The most courageous of them are discovering the unexpected power that comes from telling the truth and making amends for their past complicity in racism. Virginia Theological Seminary and Georgetown University are leading the way in seeking to make restitution for their past by establishing reparations funds. Through very public acts of confession of sin, they have shown us that confronting your history does not make your institution weaker, but actually empowers you. They have discovered the power of vulnerability, of no longer having anything in your past to hide, because you are freely revealing all. This is the power of strength through weakness. It is the power of the cross. It is the power that comes to those who descend into the depths of their pain, give up their old dreams of power, and rise again, transformed and ready to lead. As we heard in Ephesians, God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. This is the power Jesus hands over to us, his disciples. When he ascends bodily into heaven, we become his body on earth, empowered by his spirit. And how do we receive this power? the same way he did through death and resurrection. When we finally die to the power we thought we needed to possess, we can rise up in the power of God. Once the dream of restoring the kingdom to Israel has died, or whatever dreams we have for our own little kingdoms, we are ready to be part of God's bigger dream. We are ready to be part of the powerful body of Christ that stretches to the ends of the earth and unites us with brothers and sisters in every time and place. An African-American colleague of mine once said to me, in white churches, you talk about a God of love and compassion. In black churches, we talk about a God of power because we need a God who is powerful enough to change the world. So let's take up that challenge, my friends. Let's not shy away from claiming God's power. Let's not believe the lie that only weapons in the almighty dollar are powerful enough to change things. For in a few minutes, we will pray together, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Jesus didn't just take that kingdom power and glory up to heaven with him. He left it here for us. We've got the power that raised Jesus from the dead. What more do we need to change the world? Having heard the word read and proclaimed, let us affirm what we believe by using words from a declaration of faith. We are certain Jesus lives. He lives as God with us, touching all of human life with the presence of God. Because he shares our humanity and has bound us to himself in love, we have an advocate in the innermost life of God. We declare that Jesus is Lord His resurrection is a decisive victory over the powers that deform and destroy life. His lordship is hidden. The world appears to be dominated by people and systems that do not acknowledge his rule. But his lordship is real. 
It demands our loyalty and sets us free from the fear of all lesser lords who threaten us. We maintain that ultimate sovereignty belongs to Jesus Christ in every sphere of life. Jesus is Lord. He has been Lord from the beginning. He will be Lord at the end. Even now, he is Lord. Another warm welcome to everyone, whether you're a longtime member or maybe stopping by our website for the very first time. We hope that you will feel God's presence and God's welcome here in this sacred space and time together. As always, we have a lot going on in the life of this very vibrant faith community. And even though we're still worshiping apart, I encourage you to check out our website, open that egram, or go old school and call the office to find new and ongoing ways of discipleship. Make a note that next Sunday is Pentecost and it is also Youth Sunday. It's always a wonderful and joyful service and we look forward to hearing from our youth. The service is entirely created by them and led by them, including our five graduating seniors preaching. So please join us for that service. We're also excited to worship as the body of Christ in even more locations, including in this sanctuary, starting on June 6th. It'll be a smaller service, so we invite you to come also online. We're going to be streaming live, so you can join us at 11 o'clock on Sundays, beginning June 6th. There'll be more information coming to you about how to register and what to expect. And as always... If you or anyone you know is in need of help of any kind, including a pastoral care conversation, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're all in this together. And even though we still can't pass the offering plate in person, we encourage you to stay up to date with your pledge or donate online. You can text, you can call the office. It all goes to support the many ministries and mission of this church beyond our walls. Our offering is a strong statement that we acknowledge our very lives as a gift from God. So let us, with open hearts and great compassion, give of our tithes and offerings. Now let us pray. Unifying God, you call us to love our neighbors as ourselves letting go of our hurts and grievances. Jesus prayed to you for all of us. Now hear our prayers that we may love you with our whole being, openly sharing the concerns of our global family. Transforming God, we give thanks for your Son bringing us together in unity, guiding us, teaching us, sharing his power with us. He modeled the way of love for the whole universe, peacefully transferring God's power to us, Christ's hands and heads and hearts here on earth. We offer these prayers of healing and reconciliation on behalf of ourselves and our neighbors. We pray for your peace in the violence and turmoil in Israel and Palestine. Bring peace, we pray. We pray for everyone seeking refuge in this country, looking for your safety and mercy amidst neighbors. Bring healing, we pray. We pray for everyone in this country healing from political chaos and racial divisions, learning to live and work together. Bring understanding we pray. Ascending God, you who hear the cries of those in need, wrap loving arms around all who are suffering or in pain. Lend care, courage, and comfort to Rocky Lehe as he heals and bring him back to lead his flock soon. Heal all who need wholeness in body and in spirit lifting up the lonely and empowering the marginalized. Wrap loving arms around all who grieve. Comfort the anxious, the exhausted, and the fearful. 
Stand fast with all victims of abuse and violence. Fill us all with your Holy Spirit so that we might bear one another's joys and burdens. Draw us near to you as we pray for one another. Let us remember to give you all thanks and praise, O God. Praying the prayer your Son taught us so long ago, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world, into your week, continuing to love and serve our God of power who has shared that power with us. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God bring us all peace now and forever. Amen. <laughs>